the hills of Wales, almost in the middle of it, is a slate quarry. The slate is carried out from the quarry in trucks. The slate is cut and split into roofing slates, building slabs, heart stones, and many other things. At a place where this is done begins a little railway called the Chorus Railway. The engines take the finished slate along this line to a town down in the village. From there, go on a big railway to places all over the world. There were once four steam engines on the line, but two grew old and went away. None of these engines had names, just numbers. The other two engines thought names were nicer, so they called each other after their makers. Number three was called Hugh, and number four was Kerr. Kerr was much younger than Hugh, but they enjoyed working together. Once the quarry had been busy for two engines to work at once, but not now. A few trucks coupled to a passenger train was usually enough, except on fair days. Empty trucks went up and full ones came down. They would take the empty trucks from the top station to the quarry, while the engine took the coaches and passengers back down the line. The engines lived in a shed about halfway along the line. One fair day, Kerr went early to the bottom station. The weather was wet and Hugh was glad to have an extra hour or two out of the rain. Then he took some empty coach to the top station and went to find some loaded trucks. This morning there were more than usual and there was delay before the train could leave the top station. Hugh was worried. He always tried to not to be late with his train because he knew that some of the passengers wanted to go to places on the big railway. He rolled thankfully into the station at Chorus. It had a roof over the lines and he knew he would be sheltered for the rain for the few minutes. Peep, peep. He whistled. Please, hurry up. We're late. The people hurried and Hugh was soon ready to go. Just beyond the engine shed, there was a very steep hill. The men called this place the bank and it was the steepest part of the whole railway. When Kerr passed earlier, he had scarcely disturbed the thin film of rust which had formed on top of the rails, but his passing had loosened it, and now the rain had turned the rust into a slippery sludge. Hugh didn't know this, of course. He whistled and passed the shed and set off down the bank. He soon realized he was going too fast. Steady, steady, said his driver as he put on the brakes. But the extra slate wagons were pushing behind, and Hugh's wheels wouldn't go whistle the rails. His driver pulled hard on the whistle. I hope the crossing is clear, he said. Hugh hoped so too. His driver tried everything. He could, as he was actually going more, more slower now. But as they ran on the corner whistling loudly, they saw the crossing lady hurrying to open the gate. She wasn't quick enough. Just in time, she jumped clear, but the gate was left swinging over the line. Hugh hit it and bits of wood went everywhere. 
he stopped them, but because a piece of wood had bent one of his connecting rods and jammed, Hugh knew that he couldn't do more work for a while. Soon Kerr came from the bottom station and took the passengers on their way. Later, the men took off Hugh's bent rod and he limped back to the ship, only using one cylinder. That cleared the line for Kerr to work the train for the rest of the day and for several days after. Hugh was always careful on that bank after that, especially when it had been raining. It was better, he decided, never to take chances on hills again.